welcome to another match roundup. Uh, been a little while since we've done one, both been a little bit busy, haven't we? Absolutely, yeah, been a few things going on, but one thing we have done is got out on the bank plenty, so we've got a few really good matches to catch up on. Not going to try and catch up on everything because uh, we haven't really got time to do them all. But we're going to pick up on a few that, first of all, feel like we've done quite well in, and also they're going to be interesting, quite a bit to talk about. So, to start off with, uh, first match, I think we mentioned it in our last round-up, Fish, Fish North. North Final. Fish North Final, yeah. Yeah, so we were both there, obviously I was fishing, you were on commentary, yeah, commentary, doing a bit duty. Of commentary. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah. a bit of interviewing before we uh, got started, and there were no meetings. Oh, no, no, no meetings. To be honest, I was a little bit heartbroken. Um, no meat on shore, but uh, I had a simple plan. First of all, paste short, like we've talked about a few times, and then maggots shallow, and that was yeah. basically my plan. Uh, come the draw the night before, we had a great night actually. We'd done the draw at another local fishery, Tolleton Ponds. Uh, all the finalists there, they had wives and girlfriends and that yeah. type of thing with them. Yeah. Um, and it was a good night to be honest, sociable, enjoyable. And I think that's one of the great things about Fish North. It's a little bit more sort of, of a relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. Although everyone wants to win, great prize, great competition. There's a yeah. bit of a relaxed Top atmosphere about for it. Grabs, but it's definitely... Uh, you know, the atmosphere was really good, especially in the morning. It was a little bit tense on the bank, doing some of the interviews leading into the match and going round. And, you know, you could feel a little bit tension there. Everybody, like you say, wanted to win. And uh, the draw, you was happy with the draw? Yeah, to be honest, I drew peg nine and that's not really where you want to be normally. It's not been great in the matches we've fished, has it? Mm. But what they have done, the fishery team, have moved an area around into peg 11. That's right, yeah. Um, and. I was hopeful, obviously 10's not in, then 11 is, so I'm close to the area, the first person on the right hand side of it, really hopeful that that was going to change it and hold a few fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I got there, I actually changed my approach a bit when I got there, decided to start on a method feeder, um, there'd been a couple of big weights on the feeder in previous matches and I felt like, although I knew I was going to catch some on paste, it was more of a steady method for me than mm -hmm. a, an out and out winning method where I felt like a feeder and shallow were winning methods. Yeah, conditions were bright as well, weren't they? So that yeah. might have just maybe just altered a little bit. Obviously, the feeder was going to allow you a little bit of distance and maybe they would just feel more comfortable against the island. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, against the shallow fishing, you know, maybe that little ripple would probably be ideal. But, uh, but yeah, feeder. Yeah, so started on the feeder, um, ground bait round it, maggots on the hook, you know, quite a nice way to catch them small carp. And I yeah. cast it in, put it on my wrist, picked my carp up, fired a few maggots and looked down and it was nearly in the lake. And I thought, Great Easy. Start. Easiest match I'm going to ever have. Picked it up, <laughs> wound it in. And it never really happened for me. I fished it for about 40 minutes. Four or five fish on it. Um, it just wasn't right. There was fish there, but I was coming back with big balls of weed around my feed, a fish covered in weed. Yeah. It just wasn't right. I think the fish couldn't find my bait, so I've had to come off that. Um, and to be honest, the whole match just ran away from me. I've tried to catch shallow. I couldn't. Odd mm -hmm. fish. Tried to catch a few in the edge. Could nothing really worked for me yeah um maybe a little bit down to the area perhaps not as many fish there yeah. it didn't fish very well them few That's pegs right. yeah, yeah. um so i finished up with a very disappointing way i think i had about 46 or 47 pound i can't remember exactly yeah. absolutely nowhere in the match but when i look back uh, the eventual winner on the day andy bennett who is uh, any type of fishing is brilliant but yeah, yeah. that type of fishing is absolutely yeah. unbelievable yeah. i don't think there's anybody who could touch him yeah like you say all stars are even the silverfish aren't safe with that kid around but yeah. on the day flat calm conditions bright conditions and he's managed to win from an yeah. area where he's got quality around him and he's yeah. still managed to put a and performance together which just basically blown me yeah. away for sure the way i looked at it was in my opinion, he was in the worst bit of the lake yeah. and he won the match. And yeah. I honestly feel like, looking back, if he'd have been on my peg, he would have still won the match. And I yeah. think he would have won off every peg. Yeah, I, think. I think he's that good, he's that in tune with that style of fishing. Yeah. And unless someone on a peg much better than him mm -hmm. does it well, he yeah. was always going to win, I think. Yeah. So, massive well done to Andy. That was a yeah. real standout performance. Yeah, it was a really um, close final, to be fair. We, we're doing the commentary on it, you know, even with 20 minutes to go, you couldn't call it. Andy still had his quiet spells, them quiet spells, he still managed to tick a few fish over. Matty Dawes, Rob Squan and Phil Sellers, or Lee Alliwell as well. Um, you just couldn't call a win. There was five there, even like I say, with 20 minutes to go, even at the final whistle, nobody really knew who had won. Because Adam, Adam, uh, Andy was at the other side of the side of the lake and you got the four on this side of the lake, it was, uh, you, you were 
concentrating a little bit more on this side, but uh, Andy was, you could see him at distance, and again, he was ticking them fish over, and yeah. come good, won so, the champ. That's obviously another great competition. Brilliant performance by Andy to win it. Yeah, Massive well done to him. To him yeah. And I believe venues have just been sorted for next year. Tickets are about to come on sale. So yeah. anybody in the north looking for a great competition, keep your eye on that and get some tickets because, like I said, it's brilliant. Real good final, real relaxed atmosphere and a brilliant venue as well. Yeah, so, that's right. And no. then you, yourself, you've got a bit of oh, bit to talk about. You could have come and say hello. hello. Oh, We've got a little, come on, Brit. <laughs> got a little fan joined us. But you've got a couple of matches to talk about the same venue, Forest Lane. Forest Lane, with, with the, the time I'd spent there, like leading up to this uh, festival, I'd been obviously fished arena, I'd been on the, um, on the arena late, leading up to the Fish North final, and I'd fished a couple of matches on Oakland, so there was the festival, the three day festival, uh, Forest Lane, and decided to fish it, and great three days to be honest with you. Um, I'd fished the Oaklands twice and hadn't fished the furlong and had fished the hadn't fished the Don. So but we'd had a couple of sessions uh, after the testing tackle and we'd had a couple of days out there ourselves and we'd spent a couple of hours in the evening just fishing on and and just even them couple of hours just gave me a little a good feel for that particular lake, the furlong. And they did the draw the previous night, live draw for the rotation and sort of really wanted to draw the furlong first day, to be honest with you. Snake Lake, it doesn't give you too many options of what you've got to do, just more just working it out on the day. Drew Peg, 31, I think, on the day, first day, and kept it, tried to keep it as simple as possible. Bait choice, maggots, casters, micros, corn. I did mix a little bit of ground bait. I did set up quite a few rigs, quite a few maybe rigs, but I did have me plan in my head what I wanted to do. And, Started off Castor Shallow. It was quite a blustery day on the day, so I decided to fish a little bit further than uh, the middle. I, picked, I fished a catty line for, to feed casters and fish casters sort of through the water. So obviously if I weren't catching shallow, it did allow me to fish at the bottom of the shelf uh, with, the, uh, you know, with some deck rigs. Uh, big potted maggots across, but didn't really want to do that until probably two or three hours in. I was sort of targeting the carp potting maggots in the shallow water. Uh, in practice, we'd had a lot of barbel. You know, there was some there was some decent sized barbel. There was one or two that were a little bit nuisancey, but there were still weight, weight builders within them trying to tick fish over. And all the time, you were thinking that you wanted that little late run in the margin, last hour and a half, two hours in the margin. So, and I kicked off on the casters at Caster Shallow, and there was some good sized chub. It was like 12 ounce, 10 or 12 ounces yeah. that really got me off to a nice start. Um, probably after the weigh in, I probably got I probably had 40 pound of them, so probably had 50, 55 fish and two or three decent carp. I did have 10, 20 minutes over on the far side just to fill a gap before my margins kicked in. I probably had 15 to 20 of them two to three pound mirrors that was out the margins. And that got me to 138, which won the section, won the lake. Yeah. So I think great that start. lake is, um, it's probably very suited to you, isn't it? That yeah. seemed to, like you said, we stopped on, especially one time after a bit of filming. Yeah. We even laid on the far bank watching them feed. That's and it, right, was, yeah. it was very, very clear that they love natural baits. Yeah. And it, it really sort of, you could tell you were just quickly in tune with how yeah. they wanted to be fed and, and the way that the fishing was on that lake. I think it was That's always right. going to be a good lake for you. That's right, yeah, exactly. Uh, Micros and corn in the margin. Uh, that seemed to be the uh, that was the best method in the margin. Just sorted out them like two to four pound mirrors. So yeah, yeah decent ten, one three eight, good start. Uh, but also like with the rotation thing, it's like it, it's good then because then you can go back afterwards and you can sort of get a little bit of a feel with what people have caught out of caught on the lakes that I hadn't fished. Have a look at the weights. Have a look at the weight boards, the areas, what weights you're sort of targeting, and. I drew, fortunately, this was like the golden draw of the three days, was the 26 on the Don. Next which to was the bridge. Next to the bridge, which had won the lake the day before. Matty Gull had had a good weight off it, 130, 140, and he'd caught them all shallow. So that sort of set me set the tone of the day, to be honest with you. Um, bridge itself just screams fish. Yeah. And it did, obviously, it does have its problems as far as one or two fish maybe giving you a little bit of trouble. So I set up again one or two rigs with slightly different breaking strains of line. Uh, kept it quite simple. Fed casters, had some four mil pellets and casters. And the only difference with the rigs, the rig that was actually the standout rig was the long line, the long lining rig. Um, 
and the fish came very shallow. They were a bit spooky because of the shallowness of the fish and the way it wanted to feed. They were a bit spooky of the pole top, but I've had 230, 247 pounds, sorry. Yeah. So they weren't that spooky. No. Um, so yeah, so I uh, didn't actually manage to catch up the margins. To be honest with you, I had a, I had a first hour, hour and a quarter, I was sort of prepping the peg, and then I had a lovely golden spell for an hour and a half and a quiet spell for an hour. And then when I was probably gonna look for the margins to kick in, they came back shallower yeah. again. So I had that lovely burst back shallow. Yeah. So that gave me a really sort of festival winning uh, weight because obviously leading into the last day, if I managed to come first or second with the other scores that had come in, um, it sort of allowed me the weight advantage. Uh, Ash Clements was, um, Aid and Ash Clements were two in the chasing pack and for come second, uh, then the festival would be mine. And a true peg six on Oakland's, which we'd been together there uh, yeah, a few yeah, weeks previously. So the fish all qualified. I think you drew six, I drew eight. So it gave me a little bit of a, a lead into it. I got Aid on my right, that was obviously going to be one to beat. But Aidy Mitchell, of, that was. Aidy yeah. Mitchell, yeah, um, good friend from from back and. We'd had a couple of tussles in the week. I drew eight next to Aid the first day. I know how good Aid is, and especially at that style of fishing as well. As well. And so not, not, I wasn't not wanting to beat Aid, but obviously I felt the second was going to be good enough on the day. So, um, and also there's like, in, in certain, because it was a time of year that I hadn't fished that particular lake, I'd fished it previous and, and had some nice weight shallow on Maggot. The fish had actually come short onto that near shelf and. Uh, there was there was going to be some fish either on pellets and corn from the previous two days, three foot six, four foot, and then the margins were going to be the two main areas. But I sort of wanted to keep my eye on Aid as well because even though even if I could be one step behind him, he was still giving me the guy because he fishes it regular of which direction. I was using him as well as as working it out myself on the day, and the day sort of, we started short, caught and had a nice little start short and um, I was on six mil pellets. We got a real strong left to right wind on us, uh, which was making it difficult with presentation with lighter rigs on the shelf. Uh, so sort of settled nice and short. We had that nice little early start. Then you had that little middle match where you had to sort of just try and put a few fish together. The maggot line didn't kick in as well as I wanted it to do with the barbel and maybe an odd carp. Aid went out on the feeder. So I sort of followed him after two, after he caught two fish. I caught two fish. He'd come in by that time and he'd gone in the margin. So I was waiting then for him, not in the margin, sorry, on the short shelf. And I was sort of waiting for that when he was going to start catching again. He'd tell me, even I might be a couple of fish behind him, hopefully that would be enough, um, you know, enough information for me to hopefully win, get second at least in the section. And as soon as he'd caught one or missed a couple of bites short, I was in and in on it and one little key little thing was the, the amount of feed I was putting in I was even though I was only putting six or seven pellets in um, it was it was too many I was getting two just a couple of like an indication before a bite so they were just browsing over it uh, where Aid was just getting clean, cleaner bites because when I look, looked, at, looked up at him it was only feeding two or three if he missed a bite I'd only see him just feed two or three so I cut it all back and that was that was the, that was the one yeah for me and um, AIDS weighed 130, great result. I had 105. Um, Dave's had 80 or 90 pounds. I think Dan on the end he got 70 or 80 pounds. So managed to uh, managed to uh, get the second and, and get the result I was looking for. Ash Clements won his section, so I needed the second. Ash had been on the Don. He had a big weight. He had a 140, 150, won his section. So Ash was second and eight and eight finished third. Yeah. So great three days, great company, great set of lads up there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was good. I think um, that's a great sign of showing practice paying off. I mean, you've been up there quite a lot. Yeah. You've had some good results, probably yeah, some yeah. not so good that's results, right, but yeah. always learning and always figuring little things out and obviously paid off in the end. So, right, yeah. great result there. And um, one other match, just, just touch on the MK, uh, MKM Building Merchants uh, match. Uh, that was the week after, that was a £1,000. So it was like a combination, it was like sort of a a points thing over the from the fish like a fishery points thing that sort of got you got you into the final uh, i did actually manage to accumulate enough points to get myself into the final drew peg 36 on the don which i quite fancy yeah, but nice we, don't, peg. we just had uh, a little bit of rain for the previous two or three days and i just think it had soured that shallow water against the island on the far side i've had four hours two fish in four hours wasn't the start i was hoping for or needed 
and uh, even though I had a, a good a good rally last two hours, rallied around last two hours, I've ended up with 17 fish for 112, 100, no, 114 pound. That managed third overall, but it wasn't to, wasn't to, to beat Pete Topwood who took the prize. It was a good head-to-head -head battle over there. Lee Alliwellen, Pete Topwood, 20, pick 26 and pick 21. Great head-to-head uh, -head over there. 140, I think, to 150 odd pounds. So that was a real close, especially when you're talking these fish are eight and 10, 12 yeah. pound in there. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, well done to Pete on that. Fortunately for Lee, um, both cracking anglers on the venue. Um, so yeah, and that was white takers yeah. for you. Um, yeah, so I went back to white acres last year on the Preston Festival, first time seven or eight years, and I really enjoyed it, but I drew some great pegs and never really done them justice. Okay. Learnt loads, fishing's totally <coughs> changed, lots more F1s, lots of Carasio. So when I went back this year, that's all in my head and, yeah. and I definitely picked some things up. So first day I drew on Twin Oaks. I was on the high number side of Twin Oaks, peg 33. Um, 36 on the end always a hard peg to beat and James Howarth had drawn that. So okay. I was thinking I'm up against it a bit, but it's fishing, you never know. You've got to go to your peg positive, you're fishing to win first day of the festival. So I went to my peg. Um, now I'm lucky in that when I used to go to White Acres, that was one of the few lakes I did have F1s in, mm -hmm. and I had a, a rough idea of what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, started off on meat short, see if I could catch some carp. Never managed one, caught one F1. Uh, then I went a long pole, hard pellets. Again, couldn't catch anything, one F1. By then I'm an hour in, um, and I'd been loose feeding some casters down the side next to the cover, and that was okay. always a great way of catching F1s on yeah, there when I used yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was fishing hard, no one's catching anything. I thought, I'll catch some roach, some silverfish, and an odd F1, and it'll just keep me in it until maybe later on when it kicks in with F1s, I catch yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, it was brilliant. For the next right. three hours, I've caught 15 F1s, but them 15 F1s are probably averaging three pound, wow. um, along with maybe 10 pound of smaller fish, roach, perch, yeah. and odd skimmer. Yeah. Really good fishing. Um, bait limits are a bit awkward on there. I took three pints of casters and with an hour to go, I ran out. Right. Um, okay. So I spent the rest of the match on meat short and I caught two big carp on that okay. to finish up with £88, uh, enough to win a section. Great start. Lovely days fishing. What you're for. Just what you want at the start festival. of a festival. So yeah, that was a good start. And then day two, where did I go to on day two? Twin Oaks. I think I was on Trelawney on day two. Yeah. No, sorry, I wasn't. I'm wrong. Belinja? No, uh, Apollo and Twin Oaks. I can't remember where I went on the second day now. Well, so you've got Trelawney, Twin Oaks. Uh, Acorn uh, and... Acorn? No, I was on Acorn. Sorry, I was on Trelawney. Yeah. Yes, I was on Trelawney. So I went on to Trelawney, I drew pig seven. Um, horrific gale force wind straight across me. Basically unfishable. You can't remember um, that. <laughs> yeah, it's dawned on me what day it was. And then my section started at peg seven and went to my left. And okay. to be honest, the pegs going that way yeah. are generally better. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot to talk about that day. Real struggle. Um, I finished up with about £37. Yeah. Wayne Sharman won the section with the brilliant weight of £90. He was on peg 11, I think. Yeah. And then after that, it was down to £50. And then a 41. I don't know if I could have caught £50, but 41. Yeah. Probably could have done. Yeah, uh, yeah. A few fish on a feeder, a couple of fish on meat short. Yeah. Uh, lost a big carp down the edge late, which has probably cost me being third. Yeah. I actually come fourth. Terrible result. It's difficult, isn't it? Because you are targeting solely a section win. Yeah. Second is like a good cushion, it's like a nice yeah. cushion, but it can cost you going yes, falling e further exactly. down, isn't it? You know? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, bad result there. So that's left me the first and the fourth after two days. Yeah. Luckily, I'd got that win in the bank, fourth to drop. Yeah. So coming into the next day, I drew on Acorn Lake. And again, this is where last year come in really handy. I drew seven on Acorn last year, where you can reach the island. Mm, this year, yeah. I drew six. Six is a lot wider and you can't reach. Yeah. But last year, I started off on hard pellets across. Couldn't really catch. Changed it to worms, couldn't really catch. And then I changed to maggots, sort of last two hours. Caught an F1 or a Carasio every single chuck. Wow. Fishing was brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. So this time I've started on hard pellets again at sort of 13, 14 metres in the deeper water. Um, caught three straight away, nice F1s. And then I missed a few bites, wasn't quite right. So I was really quick to change to maggots. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of the day, that was steady. I had a few problems with little roach, but okay. kept putting fish in the net. I managed two nice carp on that as well. Um, and a lot of little F1s and Carasios, sort of 10, 12 ounce size, probably 
45 fish for 50 odd pound in the yeah. first four hours. Yeah. Last hour, I've caught five or six massive F1s, three right. pounders shallow, okay. yeah. and another three or four on maggots short on Great the bottom. Finish. Uh, and I finished up that day, I can't remember my weight, but I think I had about 80 something pound yeah. for a section win again. Yeah. So back in the race, two section wins and a fourth. Yeah. Thursday, the mighty Belingi. Now, yeah. Belingi's a lake. I used to do really well on it. I was caught on meat short. Mm. Meat's obviously now banned on Belingi. Um, but I drew peg 33, which for those of you who are familiar with white eggs, I used to go, is opposite the bridge peg. So it would have been 45 previously. Nice peg, mm -hmm. really fancied that one. Started off short and I only caught one Caracio on hard pellet shot. And that really shocked me after 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, well, so I've gone up the bank, had a nice run of decent cat up. Yeah. Um, and I got to two hours to go and I've got about 90 pound. Right. I'm thinking okay. the last two hours as I was mega on Belingi. Um, I've come short and into the edges and to be honest I got caught out and it's happened to me before on there chasing fish down the edge that I couldn't really catch. Okay. I think I've got seven in the edge, got sick of chasing them about was loads more coming in than what I caught. So I've gone back in on the short pole and caught three in the last sort of 20 minutes to finish up with £142. Uh, and that was second in my section, beaten by £160. Pound. Okay. And without a doubt, if I'd have just been a little bit more patient, fished in the open water and tried to catch fish instead of chasing these tails down the edge, mm -hmm. I would definitely have won my section that right. day. And okay. it, it massively cost me come the end. Okay. So on to Friday and on to Match Lake, following uh, peg 15, and I'm needing probably a section win, possibly a second to get into Saturday's Park Dean final. Okay. 15, lovely peg. Um, yeah. Always going to give me a chance of getting in there. Yeah. So again, a nice simple approach, method feeder to the island, maggots and ground bait, fishing for F1s and Carasios. Yeah. This is again where I noticed last year how much the lake had changed. Not so many big carp, but bites to be had. Yeah. Weights are low, but there's bites. And then long pole where I was going to fish worms, hopefully loose feed a few casters later on for shallow. Yeah. So started off on the method feeder, really good start. I've got 15 fish in the first hour for right. 12 pounds. Start looking for? Ticked along on that, kept catching an odd little carp, odd little Carasio, uh, an odd F1, and I kept having a look on the pole and I never had a bite. I couldn't believe it because worms have been the banker method. I've kept topping up little balls of soil with a few worms, a few yeah. casters. And just, just a quick one there with this, with this, with the worms thing. I mean, I've read a lot of reports and worms seem to be the thing. Like long pole, everybody sort of turned. Out. How are they feeding these at the moment? Is it just, is it neat? Is it a little bit of ground bait? Is um, it mushing them up? Yeah, is mostly it? chopped really fine. A few casters, few micro pellets, and just some soil out with your worms to hold them together. Right, okay. So I kept topping okay. up with these little balls, and I've not had a bite. Yeah. So we're two hours to go, and the Wind's just dropped a bit and it's just warmed up and I thought I'm going to have to go for it shallow, I need a run. Yeah. So started loose feeding casters, nice and positive and luckily last hour I've caught six big F1s, five big F1s shallow and maybe six or seven Carasio. Good finish. I've finished up with £46, enough to win a section. Brilliant. So that's made me finish up with three wins, a second, dropping that really poor fourth. Uh, ninth in the festival and a place in the Park Dean final. Brilliant. But ultimately that day on Belingi when I knew I'd messed it up and I should have won, it's cost me coming second with four wins. Right. So yeah. really yeah. tight margins. That little mistake so, has so cost me from second there. to ninth. Yeah. And it's huge. Yeah. Um, so on from there, luckily made the Park Dean final. final. Fantastic. In my lodge, so, yeah. there's myself, Nick Speed, John Arthur, all made that final. So we were hopeful one of us was uh, going to do well. And unfortunately for me, draw peg 34 which is actually next to last year's winning peg right. which was 35 okay. but that's sort of on the end of the island going into open water yes and i've tucked in behind an island two foot yeah. deep any everywhere um and really might as well cut this one short because i caught nothing no bites i finished up with three f1s and a skimmer for 10 pound total waste of time but one last little thing on that what i'd like to pick up on um is the winner paul holland yeah i don't know how many park dean finals paul holland been on but for me, there isn't a more deserving winner of that title than yeah, Paul. He put yeah. so much effort in, one of the real nice guys of angling and yeah. willing to help absolutely anyone on the yeah, bank. And is, yeah. I think that's just the rewards for all his effort, all his dedication. So a really, really popular winner. Don't think there's anyone who wouldn't have liked to have no, seen Paul, Paul win that one. I've known Paul for a long while. And again, I think a lot of people were made up. You've only got to look at the comments and the, the likes and everything that's basically surrounded around it. Yeah, great. Yeah. I just love so, to see him with that trophy, great pictures. And great for his family as well. Big, you know, his family support him as yeah. well, really well. So definitely, yeah, great result for him. Yeah, so a massive, massive, well done to yeah. Paul. Um, brilliant to see him win, and I'm sure it's probably the first of many titles. Yeah. Now he's yeah. got that first Park Dean under his belt. Yeah. But that is the end of our round up. A little bit, uh, probably long-winded 
this one. It's been a while since we've been yeah, out. We've Hopefully the, we're back a bit quicker next time. We've got the Winter League campaigns coming up, haven't we? And you know, we're both looking forward to a, some Winter Leagues, local yeah. Winter Leagues, further Winter Leagues. Myself, I'm off to Tunnel Barn Farm, uh, fishing the teams before this winter, Lindone Winter League yourself. Hopefully I'm going to fish Woodlands Winter League. Um, I've not been to Woodlands much this year and I do love it there, so I think that's my plan for this winter. Fish local, a little bit less travelling, hopefully enjoy myself. But for now, behind us on this lake, there's fish topping absolutely everywhere and I can't wait to go and have a fish. So I think we'll call it a day there. Brilliant. We'll go and catch some fish and we'll catch up with you again next time. See you soon. Thank you.